Welcome to part one, chapter two of character creation in Blender, the Rhino. My name is David Radford, and in this chapter, we're going to be going over the hands. This will include creating a separate base mesh, sculpting the primary forms, and then attaching the hands to the rest of the body. Alright, so we're going to pick up right back where we left off in chapter one. I'm going to drop in a cube and apply the matte cap material to it. Go ahead and scale it down, put it in place where the hand is going to be. Adding a couple of segments here to extrude the fingers out of. Since his hands aren't really drawn, I've decided to give him three fingers. It seemed kind of fitting for the character. I'm going to go ahead and scale those down a little bit. I'm going to add some segments right in here so that I can separate the, the diameter of the fingers from the diameter of the rest of the hand. Give me a little bit of space between the knuckles. And I'm going to kind of rotate them out to the side a little bit. Kind of splay the fingers out, which is going to make rigging a little bit easier. So I forgot to enable screencast keys when I recorded the first chapter, so I sincerely apologize. I have that on now so you can see which keys I'm actually pressing. Once again, since we're doing dynamic topology, the detail in this particular base mesh can be very, very low. It doesn't have to be exactly representative of what the final model is going to be like. Just kind of scaling it down into place. I'm not really paying too much attention to the wrist that's on the body. I'm going to be scaling that down and sculpting that into place. As you can see, I subdivided it a couple of times. And then now I'm going into sculpt mode. And once again here, I'm also not enabling dynamic topology right away. I just want to get it smoothed out and get some of the shapes a little bit cleaner before I start adding geometry. Hands can be a little bit tricky, so these guys actually get their own little segment. But hands tend to be fairly specific, and they're... They take a lot of time to learn how to get them just right, and especially if you're creating your first set of hands, it's going to take a little bit of time to get them looking the way that you want. Once you have a good hand that you like the way that it looks, definitely reuse it. Put it on different models after you've created it. Save it aside, put it in your library, and add it when you need a good hand. Just take it and then modify it. I've done that several times where I'll take one hand that I really liked and then put it on a new model and change the proportions, thicken up the fingers, and made it the way that it needed to be for the model that I was working on. I had accidentally left symmetry on, so I go ahead and turn that off. Here I'm just building up the volume of the hand. You also notice that right now he's still very pancake hand. His hand's very, very flat. The thumb isn't dropped down. There's no arch over the knuckles. I definitely go over adding those details, but for right now, still just working on the overall volume and not working on, not worrying about the shape too much. Kind of defining the knuckle around the outside of the pinky, and then pushing down to create some of the webbing. So here I'm going to use proportional editing to kind of rotate the thumb and bring it down. And then I'm going to do the same technique to raise the center of the hand up. You'll notice that if you put your hand straight out and just kind of relax it, your knuckles actually arch. They don't go completely straight, so definitely want to put that in there. And then rotating the fingers down as well. Now there I was rotating off of the 3D cursor, which I had placed it in the wrong spot, so if I move that down to the base of the knuckles and rotate, I'm able to rotate the fingers down, give them a nice relaxed pose. Here I start to sculpt the arm a little bit to kind of reduce the diameter of the wrist area so that I can get the hand in there. I had been working with the hand set to x-ray mode so that I could see all angles of it when I rotated the model around. There I disabled it just a second ago so that I could start sculpting the, the arm down and making sure that it was 
the right diameter. Still just using the draw brush and smoothing for the most part. Went ahead and scaled the hand down a little bit, it was quite large. Starting to cut in the webbing for the thumb area. And building out the palm. Now looking at the reference, this this rhino, he has a really fat wrist. It almost rolls straight into his hand at the same width. So it's kind of a, an interesting challenge to make the arm wide enough that it matches the reference, but that it doesn't look too weird in the model. This is one of those areas that 2D to 3D translation can get a little bit tricky when you're taking something that somebody had drawn in 2D and translating translating it into a 3D shape. Some things will look correct in 2D from a certain angle, but then when you try to actually model it or sculpt it, it just doesn't quite look right. So definitely want to take the time to tweak and modify to try to get it to look as much like the concept as possible, but you're not always going to be able to get that in every case. So just do the best that you can. So here I've enabled dynamic topology on the hand, and because of this particular base mesh, it ends up looking really, really messy until I start smoothing things out. So right now I'm pretty much just adding geometry. You'll see that I'll stroke over an area of the model and then smooth it back out, and I'm not actually moving the geometry that much. There I've disabled smooth shading so I could see exactly where the geometry was sticking out and where it wasn't smooth. building up a little bit more of the fat on the palm of the hand right there. Start to build up the knuckle. So one thing that I really like about modeling hands is drawing the uh, tendons on the top of the hand that go from each finger up into the wrist. So I always spend a little bit of time defining those and giving them a nice, nice shape to them. I'm a pretty skinny guy, so those tendons on myself personally are are pretty visible. Some people it's not so much, so uh, definitely keep an eye, keep looking at reference on that, um, and get reference anywhere that you can. It doesn't matter whether you're looking online or whether you're at a coffee shop. I was actually at a Starbucks coffee a few months ago, and I was working on a different character, and a guy came into the coffee shop that had hands very similar to the character that I was modeling and I actually asked the guy if I could take pictures of his hands for reference and he was kind enough to let me do that um, but it really helped me out because I was able to to take the reference photos that I needed to see what I was having trouble with so anytime that you need reference if you see it don't be shy ask if you can take a picture of some guy's hands while you're waiting in line to get your coffee it doesn't matter get that reference anywhere that you can it'll help you out Here I'm just kind of doing the fat pads on the bottom of the finger knuckles. And these get smoothed out. Depending on the character, the creases on the bottom of the knuckles will be more defined or less defined. Uh, this is also very, this is really a very character specific feature. Uh, it's not really dependent on how fat your character is. However, thicker, fattier characters tend to have more defined knuckle creases, but it's also a very stylistic choice here. So right now I'm kind of over-exaggerating the amount of fat on the fingers and making them very, very round, just kind of breaking each finger into thirds. Still working fairly low detail, so I'm not going to add a ton of detail quite yet. 
I'm still working with my detail size set to 30, so not doing a whole lot there. I notice this pinky is kind of bent a little funny, so I'm going to use the grab brush and kind of straighten that out a little bit. And also his middle finger was a little bit wider at the tip than it was at the base, and that looked kind of bizarre. So once again, making some really small changes to it and just tweaking. One of my instructors at the school that I went to, he said that any sort of modeling is 10% creation and 90% tweaking. And I definitely believe that's very, very true. So anytime you're working on a model, you're going to spend the majority of the time tweaking geometry that you've already created as opposed to creating new geometry. So with dynamic topology, that's only a half truth because by tweaking geometry, you're actually creating new stuff. So maybe he was only half right. But for the most part, I'm not actually adding tons of geometry. I'm just pushing things around. Smoothing out the tips of the fingers a little bit. They're a little bit too round. Using the grab brush to kind of pull the, the tips up a little bit shorter so they're not quite as thick as the base of his fingers. Hand is obviously obviously a lot smaller than doing a full torso, but definitely want to keep moving around it as much as you can, even just looking at it from different angles. So here I'm starting to build up the thickness on the back of the thumb. And then you'll notice I'm kind of bringing the, the hand up almost as though it was a glove, kind of giving it a little bit of a ridge around the, the forearm there. Starting to get a little bit more definition in the palm there. Pay attention to where your tendons are. There's a nice tendon that goes from your thumb into your wrist right there. So that's what I was defining right there. Starting to build that out. And then giving a little bit of definition to where the fingernails and thumbnails are going to be. Just building up a little bit more volume on the top there. Rotating around the model, making sure that I can actually see it attached everywhere. So th right there I changed my viewport lens to 52 to, to a 52 millimeter. It flattens the image out a little bit. So there we go, I've mirrored the hand. Now I didn't have symmetry on when I was working on the Rhino, so I have to go back down and use the symmetrize function. You'll notice initially I had it incorrect. I had to switch the direction from positive to negative, or vice versa. So I've re-symmetrized it, making sure the hands fit the way that I want them to. Now here's how I add the hands onto the body. It's really, really simple. Just use a Boolean modifier, and then select the hand for it. And then just apply the Boolean. Since we're working with dynamic topology, we're not worried about the dirty mesh right there. So I'm going to go back into sculpt mode on the Rhino, enable dynamic topology, and all you have to do is just smooth it out. So that's a really easy way to connect 
new geometry to it. So even if I had decided at this point that I absolutely hated the hands, I wanted to do a four-fingered hand, I could just lop off that geometry, fill the hole, create a new hand, and then Boolean it back on. So it gives you a lot of freedom working with dynamic topology on that front. So that's going to just about cover it for the hands for now. In the next chapter, I'll be going over refining the sculpt further, adding in more detail, and polishing out the model.